Do Harder. <risos> Well, well hi, hi there. I'm here today with my son, Owen, and we love reptiles. Reptiles make wonderful pets. I started keeping reptiles as a kid. I started with garter snakes and turtles and basically anything I could get my hands on. Having reptiles as a kid taught me a lot of responsibility. It taught me a lot about life. It helped me know what I wanted to do with my life, which is pursue a career as a biologist and probably more than anything, it brought me so much joy. But not all reptiles are well suited to being owned by a kid. Some reptiles, even some very popular reptiles, honestly make just terrible pets for kids. We're here to talk about the five greatest reptiles for kids, for kids, for kids, for kids. For kids. To make this list, it had to meet five important criteria. First, easy and cheap to keep and feed. Easy and cheap to keep and feed. Kids are on the budget. That's right. Second, it has to be good with handling because kids are gonna handle it. And they aren't gonna be as careful as adults. That's right. The kid, the reptile, or both could get hurt if you pick the wrong one. Third, it has to be not dangerous. Kids are gonna make mistakes. Sometimes. Fourth, it needs to be hardy and tolerant. Again, kids are gonna make mistakes. That's right. And fifth, it has to fit easily in a bedroom. And eventually a dorm room. First on our list is the corn snake. Corn snakes. Let's start with the pros of the corn snake for a pet as a kid. For starters, the corn snake has received the highest score we have ever given any reptile ever. And it deserves it. Also, they eat about one rodent a week, which really is pretty reasonable. They don't tend to skip any meals either. So, you know, you aren't going to waste any of those rodents that you bring home. You're not going to end up having to throw one away or having an unexpected pet. They're great to handle. Even a child could handle them. They're robust enough that they could handle a little bit of rough handling, but they're not likely to bite. And even if they do, it's not really going to do any real damage. They're big enough, but not too big. Kind of the perfect size for a snake. They do well in glass enclosures or in tubs, like you might find in a snake rack, and so that means you can house them really in any conventional way that you would ever house a snake. That's awesome. They don't need any special lighting, just a heat source like a heat mat and a thermostat, and you're good to go. They're super available and very inexpensive to buy. They're just fantastic. Owen, what is it that you like so much about corn snakes? Um. I like that they have a cool pattern, even cooler than any other snake. You think so? Yeah. I love that their top is really bright and beautiful, and their bottom, what does that look like? Dark. Yeah, looks like a chessboard to me. I think so it pretty. looks like um, camouflage. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? It mo looks more like corn. It looks like corn to you? Yeah. Why do you think they call them corn snakes? Their belly looks like corn. I think you're right. Corn snakes are just really great. Mm -hmm. There are some cons to the corn snake, though. No animal's perfect, and the corn snake isn't perfect, even for children. They are somewhat likely to bite as juveniles. It won't do any harm at all. In fact, if you weren't watching them do it, you wouldn't even know it was happening. But they are somewhat likely to bite at some point. The bite just might frighten some kids. That's probably the worst that would ever happen. They eat rodents, which is definitely not ideal if you really like rodents or you're averse to rodents. So if you love or hate rodents, snakes might not be for you. They can be escape artists, so you're going to need to make sure you've got a really good lid. And sometimes kids are not really good at putting lids back on, so that is definitely a concern. And last of all, it is a snake. Snakes aren't for everybody. Some people don't like them. And even if you like them, it might mean that grandma doesn't come to visit anymore. Which could be a pro. Next on our list is another spectacular reptile, and that is the leopard gecko. There are many pros to the leopard gecko. One of them that is a big deal for me is that they're very low maintenance, and that's going to be a big deal for kids because, honestly, kids might forget to do maintenance on a daily basis. But if you only have to deal with it a few times a week, that's a lot more likely that it's going to be a good situation, and leopard geckos are great like that. They can go a long time without food or water, which is good if you need to go on a vacation. It's also good if a kid forgets for a little bit. That is just a reality with kids and parents. No matter what the reptile is, you are going to need to make sure that it's being taken care of 
Leopard geckos are pretty easy as far as that goes. They don't need any special lighting, though they seem to do great with UV lighting if you want to. Generally speaking though, they do just fine with a heat source and a thermostat, a lot like a snake, less like a lot of diurnal lizards. They're very clean. They always do their business all in one corner of the enclosure and they just keep it all there. Not many other animals that'll do that for you, so that's good news. They're also super available and inexpensive to buy, which is really helpful. Oh, and what is it that you like so much about leopard geckos? I like that they have fat tails. I love that too. Do you know what's in there? Fat. Fat! Helps them live in the desert. It's the same thing that's in the hump of a camel. I love that about leopard geckos. I'm really glad you mentioned that. Anything else you love about them? Yeah. What else? I like that they stick to things. Oh, they do. Not, a, not quite like other geckos because they live in the desert and they don't have the toe pads, but they hang on with their little claws pretty well, don't they? Yeah. I like that they have these bobby things to make them look like leopards or cheetahs. I love that too. But the leopard gecko isn't perfect. For a little lizard, they can bite pretty hard. Uh, it's not gonna do any real damage. It might draw a little bit of blood and it might freak out a kid. That is a possibility. They can drop this tail, especially if it gets pinched or crushed, and that is something that can happen when kids are handling it. It will regrow, but it'll never be quite the same. They're also kind of small and delicate compared to most of the other animals on this list. So for younger children, you're definitely gonna need to know the kid, know how careful they can be with something like this, Make sure they understand what a responsibility it is to interact with it. They also require live insects, which means you've got to get those on a regular basis, and it means you've got to be okay handling them and giving them to an animal. And some people just aren't. And if, if you aren't, then a leopard gecko isn't for you, and probably not for your kids either. Next on our list is a really awesome turtle, and those are mud, musk, and stink pot turtles. There are a lot of pros to these guys. First of all, these are adults. They stay very small, which for a water turtle is extremely important for a lot of reasons. They're very interactive and fun in the water. They're just going to be swimming around. They're going to come up and beg for food. They could eat right out of your hand. You got to be a little bit careful about that because they could bite pretty hard for a little turtle, but they'll eat right out of your hand often. They do really well on a commercially available like canned turtle food diet. Just a whole lot to love about these guys. Owen, what do you love about mud musk turtles? I like that they shed their old shell off and grow new shells. Oh, yeah, that's really cool, isn't it? Mud musk turtles, they make great pets, but they're not perfect pets for everybody, at least. As an aquatic turtle, they require, well, water. And that means that they need filtration. It means they need heat. And frequent water changes, that's a pain. In addition to all the stuff you need for water, they need a basking spot, which means they need all the lamps that a lot of other reptiles need, and yet you still have to deal with the water. Some never get to four inches long, and this is really important because in some places there are laws about the size of a turtle that you're allowed to sell. And like, this one here probably isn't four inches long, and a lot of places require them to be four inches long, or they're illegal to sell. And I say illegal because there are a lot of loopholes in this law, it's kind of not a real hardcore thing, but you should check your state laws and depending, you might not be able to get a lot of species, some of the bigger ones you could get, but only as adults. And last of all, they bite hard for a little guy. They're little turtles, but they got big heads and powerful jaws, which are really cool for a lot of things, but not if it's latched onto you. I've never had this happen. Uh, as a kid, I learned to be very careful with turtles and I never got bit by one. You figure out where that head can go and they are turtles, so it's pretty avoidable if you hold them in the right places. But if you hold them in the wrong places, you'll discover what the wrong places are. And some kids might learn the hard way. They are, obviously, a lot less active on land. Though they can move pretty quickly, surprisingly quickly for a turtle, they are way more active in the water. Next on our list, the best pet reptiles for kids is the sand boa. And the sand boa! I love sand boas! I love sand boas! These are such wonderful snakes. And as you can see, one of the great pros of the sand boa is that they're probably the easiest animal on this list for kids to handle. They don't tend to move very quickly and they're a very manageable size for a kid. But still big and robust enough that most kids won't hurt them. Unless they do it on purpose. They can go a long time without food or water, which is a Good deal because, you know, if you're a parent and you haven't checked for a while and you realize your kid isn't taking good care of it, 
the snake will probably recover just fine. Try not to have this happen, but if it does, as can happen with kids, this animal is going to deal with it better than most. They don't need any special lighting, just a warm spot. It could be like a heat pad with a thermostat and you're good to go. They do well in a smaller glass enclosure or a smaller tub than corn snakes would need, so they're a lot more practical even than the corn snake, and the corn snake totally rocks. As adults, like I said before, they're a very, very good size for handling. Probably about as good as a snake can be. Owen, what do you like most about sand boas? I like that at the top they look spiky, they are spiky, and at the bottom they're not. Oh yeah, you like that they're spiky on top and the bottom smooth? Yeah. I like that too. They're so cool. Rad snakes, but not perfect, right? No animal's perfect. They do have some cons. For starters, especially as babies, they are very small and probably not suitable for most kids to handle. They also eat rodents. And so just like with corn snakes, if you can't handle either feeding a rodent to something because you love rodents or you can't handle dealing with rodents because you hate rodents, snakes in general are probably not for you. They are somewhat likely to bite at some point. They kind of whip around with their head and they can bite you. It's not going to do any damage, but it's kind of freaky if you're a kid. And another problem is that they're generally buried. They, these guys basically swim through the sand and most of the time if you look into their enclosure, you're not going to see anything at all except maybe a little nose and eyeball sticking out. And that's kind of a bummer. And last of all, again, it is a snake. Grandma might not come to visit anymore. Last, but certainly not least, on our list of the five best pet reptiles for kids is the blue tongue skink. The blue tongue skink. There are so many pros. These lizards are arguably the best pet lizard you could have, period. They're definitely the most robust animal on this list. They are big. I said they were last, but not least, and this is probably last and most. They are big, sturdy lizards. Their food is available at the grocery store, and probably nobody is afraid of it. They have fantastic personalities. Of all the animals on the list, this is definitely going to be the one that will appear to crave attention the most. They're also very unlikely to drop their tail. I believe it's possible, but it's super unlikely. Owen, what do you like about blue tongue skinks? I like that they have blue tongues, and has orange eyes. I like and that. And it has a long tail, and it has weird toes and has short feet and its body has a cool pattern. This cool pattern. Isn't that the coolest? Even the blue tongue skink though has some cons. Of all the animals we've talked about today, the blue tongue skink is going to require the largest enclosure. This is the largest animal, it needs the largest enclosure. And that probably means the most expensive enclosure too. They can bite really hard for a lizard this size. Now their teeth aren't really very sharp, it's probably not going to cut you up very much, but it bites hard and it'll hurt quite a bit while it's happening and that could really freak out a little kid. Doesn't happen a lot, but if it does happen, it'll be the most serious bite of any animal we've talked about on this list. They're very expensive to buy. Uh, this is probably going to be an animal that's going to be outside of the price range of most kids to buy for themselves. Not inordinately expensive, not more than say a dog, but expensive, right? Dogs are expensive. And last of all, they're somewhat hard to find. And this is just because they're a really great pet lizard and everybody wants one. And not that many people breed them successfully. So there aren't a whole lot of them out there, but if you can find one, and you probably can, it's gonna be a great pet, even appropriate for a kid. Some kids aren't right for a pet of any kind, but if you are, or if you're the parent of such a kid, lucky you, then you can't do any better than these five. We have full videos on each one of these five amazing pet reptiles for kids. So if you think you've found a winner or you just want more information about them, please check out each and every one of those. In fact, we'll make a full playlist of those videos right there. So you can just click there right now. As always, like and subscribe. Make sure you click that little bell. Yeah, tell them, do they need to click that little bell? Yeah. How, how much? How much do I need to click it? Oh, all the time. All the time. Click that bell. So you get a notification whenever one of our new videos comes out. And always like and subscribe. And we <laughs> hope to see you really, really soon. Well, well hi there. there. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome, dude. And we hope to see you really, really soon. Easy to cheat to keep. Easy and, and cheap. Easy and cheap to keep and feed. Easy to keep to eat.
and feed. Easy to cheat, the easy to keep, the eat and feed. The five best pet reptiles for kids. <laughs> the five best reptiles for kids. Kids are not gonna ha do it as well as an adult, and they aren't gonna be as easy as an adult. Kids are gonna make it mistake. Perfect. And eventually, kids. Are in no. a and eventually a dorm room. And eventually a door room. So and that's eventually where I met Will. So yeah. That's right. And that's where Will met lack of reason. <laughs> <laughs> it might mean that grandma doesn't come to visit anymore. Which could be a pro. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Next on our list is another I like my hand. It does like your hand. Silly dance, silly dance, silly dance, dance. <laughs> <laughs> Smile really big. Good job. Say, I love sand boas. I love sand boas. Louder. I love sand boas. Louder. I love sand boas. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good deal. On the book, we will have you saw me that time. We will be bloopers rich in this particular video, I think. We've been bloopers poor before today. Bloopers rich. You are the best, Owen. Them and feeding them to an animal. And those are all things that some people are not okay with. Good stuff? Yeah, let's do that one more time. Okay. Love you, pal. Thanks for being my co-host today.